I'm Sean McAllister. I'm on the board of directors of Chakruna, I'm an attorney who works on psychedelic policy and law in a lot of different areas in the field. I'm honored to be here. I'm Joe Tafur. I'm an integrative family physician and I'm an ayahuasca at the Church of the Eagle and the Condor. Hey, uh, my name is Adam Strauss. Uh, arguably, I should not be up here. I, uh, <laughs> I have no specific credentials other than I, uh, I, share, I, sh I'll be, I share my psychedelic experiences and perspectives on various stages, and I'll be doing that here momentarily. My name is Michael Ziegler. I think I'm here as a rabbi. I was one of the founders of the Chaplaincy Institute in Berkeley. I'm also a Hindu Bufi Cadelic. Okay. I am Dr. Melody Hayes. Um, I don't really know what I am right now. <laughs> um, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> I am a uh, doctoral student at UC Berkeley focusing on interdis interdisciplinary studies and uh, indigenous representation in psychedelics. Great, I'm Eric Davis. I'm on the advisory board for Shakruna and um, I had a lot to do with putting programming this conference and coming up with the ideas and angles on it. So I'm very excited to be here and to see how it unfolds. Okay, so the format will be um, that each person will speak for about five minutes. And because Joe and I have some beef that we're going to like figure out on the panel, uh, <laughs> arguing with each other, uh, the panelists will have a moment to like talk among each other about the things that we talk, and I'm going to be like, that's bullshit, Joe. <laughs> 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 you can already that choose my not, side. That was, now. <laughs> that was your realization. That was not what Spirit said to me, but okay. Um, and then we, if there's time, because we really have a strong desire for you guys just to be together, to socialize and connect, because why? Connection is the medicine, right? Community is the medicine. So there's a strong desire to just in at 8.30, but we'll be in, in connection to what the room wants to do. Um, because oh, also, oh, excuse me. We will be in connection with what the room wants to do. <laughs> yeah. I'm black and no one's ever told me I'm not speaking about that. <laughs> so, okay. But anyway, um, but thank you for the reminder. I appreciate it. Um, um, we will be connecting. We really want you guys to have time to connect, but we will also be feeling what the room wants. And if you have questions, because I really, I always think that when people are together, there's a unique energy and listening to the, what the room wants to do. You know, what, the energy is saying how, how it sh we should follow it. Okay, so I want to start with uh, you doing your first five minutes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, wow. Let's see if I can uh, make this interesting for everybody. As I like to say, I'll, I'll try to be brief. I don't have to try to be short. <laughs> uh, but um, no, I mean, you know, I was. I'm not sure what I, what I was supposed to talk about. He had just told me, so I'm working on this. But I was thinking today that why, why is a cis white, gender, cis white male gender guy be the chair of the board of directors of Chakruna? What the hell is going on here? Well, uh, first of all, I'm a great fan of Dr. Bia Labache. Um, let's give it up for Dr. Labache. way to get an applause, but 25 years ago, backpacking through the jungles of Brazil and Mexico, drinking ayahuasca at every turn, doing lots of irresponsible things, but led a life of uh, lead by example and never give up and um, immigrate to the United States and find a community here, and we're just so grateful for everything she's done, and so grateful she moved to the U.S., and we welcome her here, and I really am here to support Dr. Labache, because you know, I'm, I, like I say, I'm another long line of, you know, privileged white males that goes to Costa Rica and drinks ayahuasca and says, okay, wait a minute, how do I help? And everybody pointed me to Bia. And um, 
it's really remarkable what Chakruna does, and that's why I want to thank you all for being here, for supporting the most cutting edge psychedelic reform organization there is. These are always the most important conversations in Chakruna, whether it's about our LGBTQ plus IA community or indigenous reciprocity or environmental protection. You know, we see the confluence of psychedelics and so many progressive movements and BIA brings that together for us. Um, and that's what it's about. That's what somebody like me is doing sitting here growing up in the 70s and 80s, a latchkey kid with family trauma as a child, replicated in my own first marriage with my own children. You know, we are a generation that is spiritual but not religious, that is looking for a substitute for failed patriarchy and Christianity. And psychedelics and indigenous wisdom is providing an opportunity for so many of us that have been damaged. Uh, healers like Dr. Joe Tafour you know, helping us reconnect with our ancestral connection to plant medicine and to the earth. You know, my ancestors were Irish people that sat in circles and did plant medicine ceremonies. Um, and when I sit in a Shipibo circle, I feel that ancestral connection, that um, lineage, that uh, continuous line of, of uh, spirituality that, you know, all of us were con conquered at one point. Some of us just are cultures longer than others. And so that's what, for me, Chakuna represents, is this confluence of um, <clears throat> cultures, this uh, dedication to reciprocity for indigenous people. Um, and that's why I'm here. Uh, I'm here to you know, give thanks and respect to those that have kept the light burning um, and to change these 70-year-old racist, ignorant laws. You know, we're just in a process of coming out of ignorance into wisdom. And so, you know, how that manifests for me and what I see in the coming years is, you know, seven months from now in Colorado, you're going to have four psychedelics that are legal to possess, cultivate, and share among all adults. It's happening in Oregon. It's happening in California. And religious freedom specifically, the reason I'm on the steering committee for the Colorado Initiative is because we are protecting communal use. We are protecting traditional indigenous use. We are leaving a space for a non-commercialized healing place where real healing can happen. Um, and yes, there's going to be an Oregon-style regulated piece there, but I see four or five different visions of the psychedelic future in America. There's going to be an FDA route. There's going to be a state-regulated route. There's going to be a religious freedom route. There's going to be uh, you know, an underground libertarian uh, psychedelic freedom route for people. And so with all those things, you know, as Bia says, what, what we're trying to do is create culture around this, not counterculture. We're um, the best practitioners, the best people leading the way are doing it in a way that gives back to community, that, that centers equity, that centers indigenous people, that finds new ways to deal with capital. Um, and all those things, unfortunately, you're going to have to have a lawyer involved. Uh, <laughs> So uh, pick the right one, but uh, there's a lot of other great ones here. My friends Ariel and Nicole and uh, a lot of great psychedelic lawyers. So I won't go on and on, but I'm involved in all those things. The policy, the religious freedom work with Joe's church that could set precedent in the coming year or two as the first non-Brazilian ayahuasca church recognized in the United States. This is the most important case in front of us. It could open the door for many other people in the future, um, many other hybridized U.S. churches. I, I love going to Peru. I love going to Latin America and have deep respect for that. But we, I want to see that be legal in the United States for all of us that are called. And so that's why I'm doing the little work I'm doing. And it's an honor to be on this panel. And you did a great job opening this up and grounding us. And I think with that, I'll just turn it over to my brother, Dr. Zafur. That was pretty awesome, Sean. Was, uh, it's kind of hard to, because I'm between like federal prosecutor and stand-up comedian. <laughs> Are you on your phone? <laughs> time, yeah, time to read that paper. Let's try to think of it. Well, I saw it. It's the timer. I did see it. Uh, she's an amazing... She no, no, no. Uh, I want to thank Melody for being here. She's an amazing uh, physician, spiritual person. You know, that's that's helping guide this. And this is these are tricky topics, and it's very interesting times.
thank Bia, Chakrona, everybody here, um, a lot of friends here, Sean, you know, for everything that he's doing. Yeah, I'm, uh, you know, we, we ourselves, we, you know, we don't, we don't necessarily like the, the term ayahuasca church, we're a church, you know, we're a spiritual community, and, you know, ayahuasca is a sacrament that we, uh, that for us, we, we, it's essential for us, and so then, I made notes because I'm scared of my company here, so I, there's there's my notes. With Wikipedia, I used Wikipedia before I came. To. And um, thank you, thank you. That helps. No, uh, Melody said, you know, the wisdom of our grandmothers. You know, my my grandmothers are Colombian from Colombia, and so for us, for people like them, like my mom, you know, they didn't. They didn't learn, uh, they're, well, they're Catholic, you know, they, that's basically, they, <laughs> but they're spiritual, they're mystical. Our family is like that, you know, we learned mysticism and spirituality from our family, from, not from psychedelics. Mm -hmm. And so, it's, to me, that's important, and this is where we're going to start fighting with Melody, I don't know if she's going to fight with me or not. But that spirituality, you know, is, it's, it's a religion, I guess, is a system of faith and worship. According to uh, Wikipedia, spirituality, <laughs> which is like, that is it, right? The like, Star Trek computer is Wikipedia, so like, in a few years, we're like, computer, what is spirituality? They're going to say, spirituality is, and so it's, uh, it's, it's something like helping, it's uh, people search for ultimate or sacred meaning and purpose in life, right? Like a lawyer. So the search for sacred meaning and purpose in life. And so in that sense, you know, that's, that's, that's what it is. And so you, you, there's a lot of different ways to get there and find that. And, uh, and that's beautiful. And like I said, then for, for our community, for my spiritual community, Church of the Only Condor, we're saying, yes, you know, uh, ayahuasca ceremony is, is part of that for us. That that's essential for us. That that's a sacrament for us. So for my mom, you know, she, she doesn't need to do it for that. But for us, it helps us in our spirituality. What, what do I mean by that? I mean it helps us in this search for ultimate or sacred meaning and purpose in life. It helps us uh, realign with, with the sacred. And so in that sense, it's not, and that's why I look at the stoned ape and that's some of the stuff that comes out that people are like, oh, all religion is from psychedelics. You know, for me that just kind of falls a little flat, you know, because I'm where I'm from and because the wisdom of my grandparents and, and how I feel about my life. And so, that being said, like I just told you, I'm part of the Church of the Eagle and the Condor, for us it's an essential sacrament. And so, yes, it, it, is, it does contribute, for sure, to our spiritual practice, our spiritual knowledge. So I would say that in all time, in my belief and understanding, that it's not dependent on psychedelics. However, psychedelics have always influenced religious thinking and religious culture, always. And we're just every day learning more and more how that may have been you know, covered up or discarded. And yeah, this will, you'll get into it here, right? I know you're gonna to talk to your mortality key and the, and the thing. And uh, so but my thing is that it's always been there. So respect it for that. It's not, it's not the only way, but it's always been there. And it deserves that credit, it deserves that respect. And that's what we're asking for ourselves and for our community. And so like for my mom, yes, my mom, you know, what, why do you go to church? You know, what, and she's like, oh, they're not taking your nephews to church, you know. They don't know. Then she says, well, why do you, what do you want her, them to get? She says, you know, pa, pa que conocen Dios. Like, so that they come to know God. Mm -hmm. That that's why you go. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, there's other people that use religion for all the different terrible reasons that people use religion for, right? Mm -hmm. but we're talking about guiding people in their spirituality to try to get to know the divine, to try to get to know what's sacred to you. So what's, what's God? Just to throw it out there, this is from Joseph Campbell. And I'll sign off with this one. God is a metaphor for that which transcends all levels of intellectual thought. So, something like that. So thank you everybody, it's great to be here. Can't wait for the discussion. I have force of habit, I, I have to stand. Is that weird? I'm standing <laughs> literally the all of my back. This is good. Uh, Can I slap you later? What? Can I slap you? With consent, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Of course. Pre-consent. Uh, no, it's, I, I, I am very honored to be here. Um, and to be in, back in the Bay Area, I, I mostly have lived in New York, but I feel at home here. I realized yesterday, I, I heard myself say this phrase out loud. I said, yeah, I'm currently between shamans. And, um, 
and everyone was like, oh, yeah, I've been there. Was, so I feel at home here. <laughs> it was a 420 celebration, which obviously is uh, not a traditional classic psychedelic. And what I like about weed, though, is it's a self-regulating drug. You know, if you smoke too much, you always reach a point where like, you can't take another hit, it's physically impossible. Because <laughs> you have no idea what you just did with a lighter. I mean, it was here two minutes ago, you haven't moved off your couch in three hours, it's... You always find a lighter eventually, though, and it's always in the same place, it's always in your hand every time, so... <laughs> But we're here to talk about psychedelics, and psychedelics have been instrumental in my own, uh, well, my own story. So my story, I had very, very debilitating obsessive compulsive disorder. I don't know if anyone has OCD, just raise your hand six times. It's um, <laughs> it was very severe. I, I've been on all sorts of Western medicines, uh, SSRIs, therapists, all that stuff. Nothing helped, and then I read a study that showed that mushrooms could potentially treat OCD. So I tried to cure myself. And I have a solo show about this called The Mushroom Cure. And whenever I tell people at the show, they're always like, well, well, did it work? And I'm always like, just buy tickets. I mean, come on. <laughs> Unbelievable, right? I need a good lawyer. Uh, and then they're always like, but I'm your mother. I'm just concerned about you. So, so I'm not going to tell you if it worked. I will say, though, I once took a huge dose of mushrooms an hour ago. And uh, I don't know how you guys are celebrating this conference, but... Um, but the show, I should mention this, the show is currently playing in Berkeley uh, at the Marsh Theater through the end of May. And just for you guys, because you're special, I had the theater prepare a special promo code so you can get a discount uh, for the show. And the code is Shakruna. So if you go to my website, themushroomcure.com, or if you Google the Marsh Theater, you, you guys know how to use the internet. I'm sure you'll succeed in finding it. Shakruna is your promo code. So uh, come if you want. Um, I know this isn't supposed to be commercial, but some mushrooms have been helpful. Yeah, we're gonna talk about you, Joe, now. Ayahuasca. Yeah, talk about me. I'm the... Go ahead. Ayahuasca, though, is actually also. Do I want to say more? No, we can talk about ayahuasca. It seems to be a theme here tonight. Uh, I like the phrase psychedelic lawyer. That's not a phrase that I've heard before, but I feel like it's probably it's gonna become more common. And, and it's good, because we do need to work within the system. Um, I feel like I need a psychedelic lawyer. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, ayahuasca has been, um, it's, it's the psychedelic I've, I've worked with the most in recent years, and I, I love the fact that you can say working with, with psychedelics, right? You can't use that, that language with any other substance, you know? You can't be like, yeah, I've, I've been working a lot with crystal meth, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 So, but I have worked uh, a lot with ayahuasca, uh, including with Dr. Tafur. We don't have time to get into our whole, our whole ayahuasca history, but, but it has been, the, the reason I gravitated towards ayahuasca, uh, even though mushrooms and other psychedelics did significantly relieve my OCD, not entirely cured, but the reason I started working with ayahuasca is because of the purported healing properties. It's said that, as I'm sure many of you know, one night, one night of ayahuasca is the equivalent of 10 years of therapy, uh, which means I've had 190 years of therapy. I feel like I should be doing better right now, quite frankly. So I want a refund, Dr. Tafur, a partial refund, currently between shamans. Anyway, uh, but it, it is, and I think it's the healing properties that have made ayahuasca so popular because certainly many of the effects of ayahuasca do not sound appealing on paper, right? It's the only thing where people are like, I thought I was going to die for four hours, I was vomiting, I had explosive diarrhea. It was the best night of my life. I'm actually going to do it again tonight, so. But there is, there is a real trend um, towards commercialization of, of these plant medicines. And yeah, I mean, you know, on one hand, I think it's good if people are exposed to this in the right context, and if that helps get more people, perhaps, but it is, I don't know, I just feel like soon we're gonna see things like diet ayahuasca, that's gonna be coming out soon. <laughs> diet ayahuasca. All of the entities, none of the calories. Diet ayahuasca. All of the 
Really, that's my favorite thing I'm going to say tonight. Okay. Like oh, thank you, Charles. Yeah, thank you. I feel like this. I am though. No, I'm trying to cash in on the commercialization thing too. I'm actually, and I want to. I do. I, I'm going to start doing copywriting for psychedelic ads. Uh, if anyone is hiring, um, consider hiring me. Uh, so here's what I've written. Tell, tell me, I'm, I'm sort of focus grouping it right now. Let me know what you think. All right. <clears throat> Enlightenment. Wouldn't you like to see through the illusory duality of all existence, thereby losing your alienation and fear of death? Of course you would. But with your busy modern lifestyle, who has the time? Five MEO DMT. Enlightenment in eight minutes or less. So, all right, how am I doing with time? Are you doing it? 30 seconds. Well, then I, I'll say I, I do want to give a, a genuine thanks as well for including me because I think it's, uh, you know, to me, this stuff is sacred. Plant medicines absolutely are sacred. But to me, laughter is, is a mystical, sacred thing. And I, and I really appreciate Bia has been so supportive for many years since I, uh, doing the mushroom cure. And I appreciate Shakuna and Bia uh, including me and including laughter in, in, in these sort of things. And just, yeah, it's great to see people coming out and supporting this. So. Usually you get off stage to applause, but now I'm just gonna sit down quietly, so. <laughs> oh, I got him, I got the comedian. <laughs> return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return to who you are, return to where you are, return to what you are, born and reborn again. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return to who you are, return to what you are, return to where you are, Born and reborn again, return again. So, psychedelics don't occasion religious experience. It's something that we as humans do. So what, what do psychedelics do? And I've been thinking, I wanted to essentialize this in four minutes. For me, they, dis they occasion the dissolution of personal identity me, my mind, moves into us, ours, everything is connected. There's a deep reverence that naturally arises when you move from I to thou. From an individual monad into cosmic interconnectedness. And these materials are, are, give us opportunities that we can tap into plant and animal consciousness where we can inhabit spiritual, angelic, heavenly, and hell realms. And if we allow it, it can disrupt our certain reality maps. My favorite quality of psychoactives is they allow us to travel in time, that we can draw from our well of memory, and we can do healing in the past. We can also access prophetic insight, looking into the future to imagine new possibilities. I think the crux of the inquiry about psychedelics and religion is all about wise application, what the, our Buddhist friends call upaya. So what are the skillful means for the sacred use of psychedelics? I think collectively we're in the process of reimagining a religious vernacular that sacralizes the use of entheogenic molecules. We do this by creating rituals that call in sacred time, space, and place, making temporal time and space holy. I'm looking forward to this next phase when we'll open source the skillful means of pairing the subjective effects of specific molecules with specific practices that give rise to meaning-making experiences that, that all of us would want to install in our inner hard drives. So it's possible, let's get Sasha Shulgin granular. I think we can use MDMA and its analogs for the cultivation of a felt sense of compassion. 
to use in pathogens as allies for old-fashioned practices like Tibetan Tonglen, practice of radical compassion, or the Theravada meta process to expand loving kindness in the world, or for tshuva, for forgiveness, for end of life reconciliation before death, or for breaking the chains of multi-generational trauma. With LSD, psilocybin, ayahuasca, we have opportunities to explore transpersonal realities, to intentionally explore religious, mythic, po mythopoetic themes, the energetic body, birth, death, reincarnation, to re-enchant, I'm really looking forward to re-enchanting old mystery school archetypes, bringing back Isis and Osiris, Yahweh and the Shekhinah and Christ, Krishna and Parvati, Oshun and Shango. What can they teach us about inhabiting human? With mescaline, we can learn from our holy Weichel brethren the practice of sitting around a sacred bonfire under the vault of heaven, cultivating a sense of prayerfulness and devotion, awe and wonder, inquiring about the nature of our humanness and our connection with the greater web of life that birthed us. There we can offer prayers up our, our prayers, our fears and hopes, and offer it to the holy fire of transformation. I'm like, oh, yeah. um, okay, so, ooh, I'm so happy to be here. Um, my skin's tingling because I'm like, oh, I want to say it. I want to say it all. Um, so one time I was at a conference and I had contributed mightily in a way of just being a strong container of maturity and um, people were praising my poise at that moment at that conference. And later on that evening, someone said, wow, I really saw the spirit of ketamine and melody. And all the wisdom inside me said, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, because what is in me could not come from ketamine. What is in me has come from my years of spiritual practice, my years of commitment to devotion, humility, uh, of being in the arms of wise women in Pentecostal churches, in meditation retreats in Thailand. Um, so there was this really, that was the first moment of discordance to attribute my spiritual practices to a chemical. Um, and then I was a teetotaling Christian. And so when I came into this psychedelic world, um, I was like, y'all some hellions. <laughs> I was like, who are these people? They're wild. A lot of them still got some DSM stuff going on. Hey! <laughs> to another journey to discern what's really going on. But I think that my point is, is that, this is what Joe and I were talking about before. Is there a way that the lights can be brought down? Is there a way that can happen? We're blind and um, I would rather see your faces. Um, and so there's this hoopla, effervescence, zeal, the evangelism for psychedelics, and there's also this really powerful shadow side in, what, in which psychedelics lead people into profound folly and delusion, and no one really addresses that. And there is far less of a community. One wise person, Izzy, said to me, people talk about psychedelics, or psychedelic community, and this is not really a community, it's just people who do the same substance. Communities are created by people who have the same commitments, the, the same values, and the same commitments to service. And so spiritual processes, all paths of spiritual growth come with disciplines. They come with values and principles. And there are very few, I actually haven't seen it. I don't know that I've seen it. A community of people outside of maybe Joe's church that's been established, 
uh, who are beyond being in circles, practicing from a place of values, commitments, and discipline. More than that, beyond saying we're a community and being in circles, there are very few people, or zero, that I've experienced who are practicing community from a place of accountability and responsibility and the, the responsibility of the community, right? And so this human work is the most complicated thing that you have been called to be. Being a human is the most amazing, challenging thing. The right ratios of giving, receiving, listening, speaking, being a host, being a guest, all of these are things that we learn by being in community and connection. And so, echoing what Joe said, I thought I was going to have to contradict him a lot, but he, he knew something. <laughs> <laughs> Joe and I had it like that, but he, but he knows it's, it's happened. It's not all of it, a lot of it's <laughs> but, um, but people have experiences, and some of them are spiritual, and however, that these spiritual experiences are not are not equivalent to a direction. Having these experiences do not point people in direction. And you know, my directionality is accountability, honesty, responsibility, and service, right? And so, you know, because I care about social justice, because I care about creating loving communities, because I'm am a physician who cares about the health and well-being, maybe my psychedelic experiences encourage something in me to offer something to others. But someone else who has a psychedelic experience and they says they say, oh, now I'm ready for my you know series one game of my startup. You know? So there's no inherent directionality in psychedelics. But what comes with these experiences, I'm trying to be in integrity with the time I'm taking. So I'm um, just checking my clock. But there's a exuberance and a belief in your own, oh man, I wasn't going to talk. Someone else be responsible for my time. Give, just, give, just give me two more minutes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought it was to me. Um, and so the exuberance feels right. The confidence comes. And so you will be confident to practice your passion if that's service, and you will be confident to be the same fool that you always were. And so what grieves me, and I had to go through a process of discernment, is that, and y'all watch Cover Story, if you wanna go, like, listen to Cover Story, if you wanna go more to the shadow, but I didn't have to see Cover Story, I just had to see what was already happening. And people in, the, in my proximity Still continuations of like just lack of honesty, D continuing dis to disrespect to people of color, continuing entitlement by white white men of psychedelic consciousness, and so what I came out hard in, for this process for this experience. I contributed to decriminalization in Oakland. I advocated in, in California in um, in Sacramento for decriminalization, and so what was being develop and foster it because I saw angels and demons, right? I see people infused by zeal and I see people with amplified greed. And this is the truth, you know? This is the truth. It's not inconvenient because if you love the path of growth, no truth is inconvenient, right? <laughs> And so, I'm like, oh, I got a finger snap. I think I said <laughs> <laughs> And so I just really want to come and really just bring the realness about to, there's so much hubris. And it's not about substances, it's about being in a committed community to a discipline. He, he's going to hold me accountable. <laughs> to a discipline. And because I'm disciplined, I'm going to pass the mic. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, man. OK. I'm saying that if you want to grow, what's lacking? What's lacking is everyone's enlightenment is not true, right? 
And everyone's feelings of glory, like everyone's feelings of liberation, everyone's feelings of healing are not true. And so people feel like they're whole and healed, but they're still broken. And they don't know it. That's the worst part. They think they're whole and healed because they felt better, but they're not quite there. And there can be kind of parallel reality stories that they're telling themselves, and that the community is also saying, yeah, yeah, like reifying their own sense of transformation. But it's not about a high. It's about a change in your relationship with others. Okay. It's about a change in your relationships with others. Your growth, Thich Nhat Hanh says that power, real power, power is power to create happiness for others and yourself. So you're not increasing that, that practice. I don't care about your alignment or your vibration or how many eyelash circles you set in. You're not doing the work. And so how can we bring a practice and accountability, accountability to be disciplined? One more point, excuse me, I apologize. Um, people go from, I'm going to sit with psilocybin. Next thing I'm going to do MDMA, you know, LSD. I need to do a mixture, blah, blah, blah. But I really didn't get there, so now I'm going to go and do um, ayahuasca. And no, but I really have to dig deeper, so now I'm going to go and do ibogaine. And now, I, no, I really just need to mix these two together. I, psychedelics are not addictive. But that behavior is escapist. Moreover, it's not about the substance. It's about you, your commitments. And if your relationships and your commitments haven't changed, you haven't done the work. And that doesn't take a substance. listening to everybody here on stage. I came into psychedelics uh, maybe three years ago um, when I was going through therapy and I was trying to heal. And I really, really, really wanted to heal. I knew that I was uh, about six years sober. I was trying to understand um, my anger, where it was coming from, why I had it, why I was carrying it. So I really wanted to figure what is this? Why am I feeling this way? And so uh, my partner introduced me to, to mushrooms and uh, the first time we did them, I'm like, this is incredible, this is so beautiful. Like I laughed and my laugh was pure, it was love. And I was like, oh, let's do the acid. And we didn't because that's, Google said don't do that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I was really trying to, to break down those barriers of my family and, and talk of, and hear stories. I have two older sisters. They're eight and nine years older than I am. We grew up in Windrock, Arizona, on the Navajo Reservation in the 90s. And so that time, there was a lot of gang violence, a lot of drinking, a lot of domestic violence. And don't get me wrong, there's, there's a lot of statistics that plague the reservation, but it was a beautiful place to grow up in. And we were tied to our culture, tied to our grandparents. Um, literally tied, our, our umbilical cords, our placenta is buried there, so that's where we, that, that's our, our tie is there. And um, I, I, I was trying to get those stories of what happened when they were growing up and, and how their lives took these different trajectories and how they turned out to be that the women, to be the women that they are. Um, and so uh, we had these two chocolate bars that are four grams each that my partner made for us. And um, I was like, let's all get together and heal. Like, let's, let's talk about this. Let's figure this out as a family, what is going on. And, and I want you guys to heal. I need you guys to heal. You're my, my mentors. Um, and uh, my mom, they didn't want to do them, my two older sisters. Um, so my mom and I did them. And uh, uh, it was four, four grams of uh, penis envy. And, um, uh, yeah, and that I <laughs> Later on, Google said that uh, psycho, the most experienced psychonauts take uh, that, that particular mushroom. Um, 
and so I dove right in. And my mom, she dabbled in the in the seventies, like the, more recreationally, but um, we turned it into our own little ceremony. And I think that's what it was important as well as like we prayed before we did them. We talked to them. We told them like we're trying to heal our family. Like this, this show us what we need to do to heal. Um, and we put on some grounding music and. We laid down together, and I was a mama's girl growing up, so she got to cuddle with me, and I felt like I was back in the womb. Like it was womb, I felt love and beauty and balance, and we call it hojon, which is, uh, means, means uh, everything's in, in balance. There's beauty all around you. Um, and then she rolled over and she went to sleep, and she was like, don't be taking so much, you're so tiny. And then I rolled over, and that's when like my shadow work started. That was the... I saw something, I saw some, I, I was, I saw a lot of uh, entities that were tied to my guilt and anger and shame and, and trauma. And, uh, and uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, um, I remember him saying in one of his books, you acknowledge them, you say, I, I'm here to heal you, thank you for presenting yourselves, goodbye. And while that worked for another, another time that I, I did that, um, it didn't work this time. They're like, no, like you're gonna sit with us, you're gonna see us, you're gonna acknowledge us. And I was like, all right guys, like I gotta tap out. I can't, like I, I gotta I gotta get up and move. And so I went into the living room and um, uh, burned some cedar and sage. And I saw the paintings that I did of my great grandparents. My great grandma was a medicine woman. She was a hand trembler. And so her, her patients would come to her and she had specific songs and prayers um, to, to, to help guide them through. But it just reminded me that this medicine comes into our lives at certain parts and it helps us adapt and evolve and um, change our understanding of ceremony and how we use this medicine. So as healers, that medicine is always tied to us and it's how we choose to accept it. If we're choosing to accept that, that medicine, how we're choosing to help it how, how we're choosing to allow that medicine to help us and how we're choosing to um, help others with this medicine. So this, this understanding of ceremony and, and psychedelics, um, <coughs> making sure that these medicines are seen as medicines and we're giving them the most respect and love and, and um, that we have. <laughs> she knew it she knew it but but yeah I think um, I think that uh, it it opened up a lot of doors for myself for for my mom it healed our bond and it changed the entire trajectory of my life and uh, um, and now I'm I'm here speaking about psychedelics and psilocybin mushrooms I have yet to sit with ayahuasca I have yet to sit with peyote. Um, and, and I'm just really uh, giving these medicines as much for myself and, and um, talking about this whole psychedelic renaissance and the psychedelic wave that's coming and, and really understanding that um, the way I did it was very safe and, and controlled for me because I understand what it's like to sit in ceremony and there's other people out there who don't have ties to that, a culture or a, a specific identity or, or things like that. So it can be dangerous in some forms. And um, yeah. really understanding medicine in that way. So I wanna thank you all for being here today. Thank you all for listening to us and for gathering on a lonely territory. It's really important to acknowledge the land as well that we're on. Well, this panel so far has been proof positive why I, and I'm sure many of you, really love Chakruna. Because just the range of positions, perspectives, substances, degrees of humor, seriousness, uh, wisdom, playfulness. You know, it's, it's really a remarkable thing to be in a space of ideas and concepts and political protocols and problems and deep, you know, complex social issues, and also to be bringing this sort of range of openness and uh, wisdom and seeking and, uh, and love. So it's a really, just, just sitting here is really 
makes me understand why I hopped onto the Shakuna bandwagon. Uh, also be a fan, so I, you know, whatever. It's just like, I, oh, it's like my older sister that I don't have, you know. <laughs> so uh, I had a lot to do with this conference. I just, to, I wasn't going to talk about my personal life, but since that's kind of a lot of what people talked about, um, I, my, uh, my settler colonialist forefathers arrived in San Francisco Bay in 1847, which was quite auspicious year to arrive before the 49ers. And so I'm very deeply uh, rooted in that not rooted ex way uh, in this in California. And I grew up in Southern California at, in the late 70s and, and 80s, really just imbibing the kind of after fumes of the spiritual counterculture. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in relationship to the spiritual counterculture in the way that other people grow up in indigenous traditions or they're relating to tradition. And it's not the same thing, but for me it was a tradition. Acid was a sacrament that wasn't just from my own experiences, but plugged me into a whole range of explorations, ideas, uh, experiences that manifested in all sorts of ways, goofy, profane, uh, secular, uh, dangerous, but also sublime and mystical and naturalistic and, and cosmic. So I've been interested in this conjunction of psychedelics and religion for a very long time. But I just have to stop here and talk about this word religion. We've already noticed in a lot of things people say where there's this kind of contrast that people often make between, makes sense, between religion and spirituality. And I'll talk about this a little more tomorrow. You know, and exactly how you draw the line, it's kind of hard to say, but you know, spiritual is sort of personal, it's experiential. Uh, it's maybe more off on your own, you're a seeker, uh, it's more about feelings and, and, and direct experiences and religion is more of a structure, faith, ritual, collective, historical, uh, symbolic, narrative, et cetera, et cetera. These are val valid just, you know, distinctions. But there are other things going on with religion right now and I want to sort of suggest to you that religion is the elephant in the psychedelic renaissance room. And one example of this is that when we brought religion and psychedelics forum, not the spirituality and psychedelics forum, to some of the sponsors who had sponsored previously, previous recruiting events, they said, no, we're not interested in religion. And I don't know, but I suspect that if it was called the spirituality and psychedelics forum, they would have been like, sure. Healing, no problem. Ecology, no problem. But religion, mm, something there. This is important. There's something there. There's something resistant. There's something challenging and problematic. You know, we want to talk about shadow sides. We want to talk about deep legacies of violence and oppression. I mean, it's all there. It's in, it's in that matrix. But so also is an answer to a problem that, no, I mean, in particular, I think, phrased extremely well without using this language, which is that spirituality for, for contemporary capitalism is easy. It's the wellness industry. We're all individuals. We're seeking to improve ourselves. So we have experiences, and those experiences change us. They open us up, and then we want more experiences. So we're going to like, so you get this experience economy. And don't think that this experience economy only is about Las Vegas. It's also about spiritual experiences. Adam's joke about 5-MEO is not really a joke. You know, it's, a, it's actually more like a problem. <laughs> what do you do with the fact that 5-MEO can actually do that? And then it enters into a market, and it enters into an individualized capitalist economy. Oh my god, what are we going to do about all that? So you get this hunger for spiritual experience. This idea that experience is going to give it to you. And how do you get out of that without denying the spirituality? Well, for me, you've got to move towards something like religion. And I don't mean religion like a faith structure, da da da, but something that is collective, that has to do with values, that has to do with disciplines, that have to do with history and family and relationality. And, and the ultimates, you know, including the, the ultimate uh, of, of death. And, you know, I like to say that, like, I'm actually, and I, I'm not kidding, I'm not interested in psychedelic experiences anymore. I've read a lot of experience reports. 
Right. Occasionally, you still get a good one. It's sort of like people relating their dreams. You know, most of the time, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know cool, good for you. But like, but I, so I'm not interested. In, I'm not really interested in psychedelic experiences. I'm interested in psychedelic people. And I think one of the ways that we grow into that are processes that, whether we call them religious or something else. They have those, those kinds of patterns, those kinds of issues, and, and those shadows, too. So it's all part of the picture. And I'm really excited that, that uh, Bia trusted me enough to be able to say, let me uh, you know, shape a lot of the conference and the topics and the way we were going to approach things and the breadth of it. And I'll say more uh, tomorrow morning about specifics about religion in, in the terms of the conference. But uh, anyway, I'm just very happy about all this. Thank you. I didn't want to sleep, so I'm just saying we have a second mic if you oh, want to do any crossfire okay. stuff with Okay, so Jared. I'm going to ask, we have, we have nine minutes for the panel, and then we're going to close. I would, be, I would be willing to hear if your spirit was saying, let's talk more, but we have nine minutes more for the panel. Um, I want to first say thank you so much for your time. <laughs> and I um, was really moved. And um, I just did a presentation at Nerd Night. The title was Becoming Psychedelic People. Mm. And we are so much more important than what's in us and our commitment is so much more important than a, than a, than a substance. And the substance is empowered by our presence. The circle, that's us, you know? And so I just want to reply and say thank you so much. And then I wanted to ask um, a question and a you to start. This is kind of a little bit controversial. I remember being on a panel and they were saying, speaking about the cultural trauma of Native people and saying, well, we should bring psychedelics to the Native American communities. <laughs> and I was like, what the look? Because <laughs> we're going to reverse colonize Native American communities, um, with bringing them a medicine or tradition, right? And I guess I want to ask you about your ideas about psychedelics and ceremony and in, uh, in your experience or in your community, how those can be not necessarily given, but mixed mm -hmm. in, in traditional practices and that are already there. Mm -hmm. I think um, um, I'm all for it. I think that these new modern forms of psychedelics, microdosing, and again, I've only sat with psilocybin mushrooms, so that's that's my my focus. But um, I, I I grew up on the reservation. I witnessed the violence. I witnessed the the poverty and the all the horror statistics that come with um, trauma and addiction, um, anxiety, PTSD. Um, all these different types of health disparities, diabetes, cancer, everything, and, and it just it, it goes on and on and on. And so, um, I think that bringing it's, it's not it's I know that in that culture we have um, peyote and Native American church that was brought from different tribes. Um, we don't have a specific tie to psilocybin mushrooms. And again, I'm only speaking to that because I only sat with that medicine. But um, uh, I think that um, bringing about the conversation to heal, I think that there's a lot of people on the reservation who are needing, in need of this awakening. They, they need this, this um, reconnection to spirit, to, to source. Um, I think that we we're just talking about the, the concept of religion and and the word itself um, is tied to, I mean, for, for myself and what I understand of it, it's, I'm curious to, to learn about these different types of religions, Buddhism, Christianity, and psychedelics. Um, but I do know that religion on the reservation is tied to the church, to the Catholic church, to genocide and boarding school mm -hmm. and assimilation. Um, my, my grandparents grew up in the boarding school system. They were Catholic. Um, 
and, and so a lot of trauma is tied to the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that um, psychedelics should be brought to the reservation and they should be utilized and new forms of it introduced to the people. Mm -hmm. um, so there's Christianity has been infiltrating us for too long. And, it's, it's been detrimental to our identity, lots of language, lots of culture, lots of ceremonies, songs, prayers. Um, can, I, can I speak to you? Yeah. Can I, and, yeah. You've lost me, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, my name is Biela Bacci, and I just really want to thank all of you for coming here tonight. I want to thank our sponsors, and I want to thank the Chikruna team. I want to thank my wife, Clancy Kavner, that I met in Psychedelic Science 2010. We're celebrating 12 years, and we're connected through our activism and our idealism and our love for ayahuasca and psychedelics. And she's part of the Irish army descent of protectors that I have in the United States together with Sean McAllister and Harry and Ian and other wonderful white Americans that have protected me. Chikruna is a catch-all word for the leaf that makes ayahuasca, Sikotre Viridis. So it's a tribute to our friend, our teacher, our ally, you know, relative ayahuasca has been a plant inspiring, making so many of us to see, to dream, to, to think of other futures, to go to other cultures, to go to other lands, to celebrate our identity, to celebrate our families, to celebrate our love and our sense of belonging for, 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 for the universe and for all the mysteries that encompass us and all the beauty and all the magic and all the dreaming and utopia that keep us alive and that makes us breathe and, and just imagine and project. And it has been a passion for me and I dedicated my path to this, and I have just received more and more and more. And so dedicating yourself to this spiritual path is a real good thing that I believe in. And this, this nonprofit is a natural extension of this call and this growth and this love. And I want to offer my sincere Brazilian love for all of you in the United States. We are all part of the same continent, the Americas. We are all part of the same, you know, unity of, of, of connections and plants don't have geographies and traditions and cultures don't match national states. At the same time, there is brutal genocides and inequality and legacies of colonialism and uh, hierarchy and systemic oppression and marginalization and we have to talk about all of that. So Chikruna is into promoting social justice. And also I have, you know, frankly, the people that really made the U.S. palatable for, he, for me here were minorities that <laughs> received me and helped me uh, make this transition to this country. And so we are all about honoring the minorities, but also having compassion. And as everybody said here, having fun and doing all of this with some kind of light spirit and some kind of freshness, because or else we're going insane. And this is, we have literally passed a global pandemic. We, were, we had given a down payment for the Bravo in 2020 in April to do this conference and then the pandemic hit and the Bravo kept our down payment. So I want to thank them. And now we're using it two years later <laughs> after this crazy ride and, uh, you know, to celebrate the spiritual roots of the psychedelic movement because uh, this, the Global South, indigenous people, ceremony, ritual, religion, traditions is at the base of this movement. This movement didn't start, you know, with, in laboratories or in the counterculture in the United States, in the Bay Area. The, we are all heirs of indigenous people, of their traditions, of their knowledge. We either imitated their behaviors, copied their substances, and al analyzed their substances and created our own. Uh, we are all here because of these traditions, and it's time to recenter the spiritual roots of the psychedelic movement. So, in Chikrina, we are modestly celebrating shamanism, ritual religion, and our love for plants. Thank you for being here.
this moment, one moment. And I'm going to ask you to do it again. Please give gratitude to Thea, because she does amazing work. Really, her influence is global. Thank you. So much. You guys don't know how hard this woman works. She does so much, and she, she's it's amazing. Her influence is amazing. Her and her team is small. <laughs> Um, I want to honor Bia's intention for us close, uh, closely, and I want to honor that by a comment and a prayer. Um, thank you so much for mentioning the many examples of structural violence um, that are embodied or represented by illness, drug addiction, cancer, obesity, diabetes that are the result of violence, segregation in the U.S. And I want to talk to you as a physician, as a sociologist, and as someone who's passionate about public health. And just give you a little bit of history beyond the Trail of Tears, beyond the segregation onto reservations. Um, there has been cultural genocide and also uh, putting kids in these schools to not only spare the, in spare the child but kill the Indian, right? Sexual molestation in those schools. And so there's levels and levels and levels of trauma. Economic inequality, giving them poor like flour and a little bit of grease to be your subsistence, tank, subsistence food and because cultures know how to make something out of nothing. Native American communities creating uh, creating fly bread? What's fry, fry bread, fry bread, good stuff. But now, because they were given to create something that's cultural and feeling, now blaming them for their diabetes and, and obesity from the subsistence that the government gave them. That's never going to be fixed with psychedelics, right? We cannot bring psychedelics to Native American communities, we cannot bring psychedelics to the nation and address incarceration, and address health inequalities. There is a psychological naivete in our culture where we think that we can throw a pill at it or throw a mushroom at it, right? The intervention for black communities, Native American communities, women affected by rape culture is social change and policy change. And that's never going to come from a substance. It's going to come from you. And if you get a, a, a vision of a revelation, you got to get your ass up out of that circle and take action in the world. Your visuals, your highs don't matter, but your actions and your commitments do. So I really want to just, it, it hurts my heart, it's just like my passion. I really want to, we're going to pray about it, because I don't know what else to say about it. I really want to invite us to pray. May all the healed, open, humbled, transformed hearts Hear the calling for right action in their life. May they hear the calling for contribution and service that can transform our society. May visuals and visions become visions and actions toward justice. Please go into your mind's eye with me. With me, see prison doors opening and people of color walk free.
let me see truth and reconciliation processes in the U.S. that acknowledges the indignities and violence against Native communities, against African communities, against Japanese communities in this nation. Take a moment and see the change that you want to see in the world. I thank you for all the good hearts and goodwill and good intentions and right actions of the people in this room. I am asking that all your actions and all your service is blessed and, and, and amplified. And I will take this moment to say thank God and many blessings to Katanjaji Black to Jackson and just giving really many appreciations to her presence on Supreme Court. Thank you guys so much.